We'll pass the floor on to you, Mauricio. All righty. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are watching this today. Uh, this meeting, October 20 of 2020, uh, we're going to discuss with uh, some consulting experts here today as a panel. Got some few questions here for them. And uh, something that I was really curious with, um, although myself personally, I do not have much experience with uh, web design and uh, using Drupal in itself. I did. I do always get questions from my family members who have cotton wind that I've got this sort of knowledge of how to design a website and they bombard me with questions all the time looking for the you know Orozco family discount on any projects and any work um, presented me fake coupons so um, just curious about just the whole process of consulting and you know what what is deemed fair and what is deemed appropriate and uh, professional at the same time so with us today, we have uh, some consultants with uh, many years of experience. I'll go ahead and uh, give the floor to them so they can introduce themselves. Uh, we'll start off with Chris, please. Uh, my name is Chris. I have been in development, uh, specifically group development, for the last uh, 11, 11 years now. Um, on and off i have worked for various agencies i've worked as an independent consultant and for a brief to mild amount of time uh, ran a small consultant agency with a few other folks uh, in the csra um, learned a lot from that and have a kind of wide experience from working with a lot of local mom and pops all the way up to some of the largest enterprise clients um, across the u.s Cool. Thank you, Chris and William. Hello. Um, yeah, my name is Will Jackson. Uh, I have been uh, working with Drupal for about 12 years, been working uh, as a developer for uh, about you know, close to 20, 18, 19 years, something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I started out uh, just kind of doing you know web development on the side. I mean, it was a hobby that I just did for uh, myself for a few projects and um, and kind of I guess kind of as you mentioned earlier Mauricio uh, once the word gets out that you know how to build a website you know people people start to ask questions and um, you know back in back when I got started with uh, Drupal um, I mean it was like Drupal 5 uh, so uh, I think I had a larger hobbyist um, kind of following them too I mean there was, there was a lot and Chris and I had actually talked about this kind of recently but um, yeah, there, there was, it was different, different CMS back then. Um, and yeah, so I mean, it was, it, it attracted me. I got really used to it. I started going to Drupal camps and, um, you know, a lot of community events and um, yeah, I eventually opened up my own shop. Uh, so for a number of years, uh, I did uh, development as well as we did computer services too. So we're kind of a general tech support shop as well. Um, but uh, everything that we did web service related uh, involved Drupal in one way or another. And um, yeah, I started going to uh, camps and uh, getting involved with, you know, a lot of Drupal, com or commu Drupal community events and uh, eventually started doing some contracting work uh, for agencies, uh, which was nice because it was doing that. It was more uh, doing Drupal work as opposed to, you know, building a website, which is, it was two different things. Uh, and I, I think kind of, you know, talking about um, independent con consulting uh, that's something you should probably definitely want to um, kind of identify. So uh, I do a lot of agency work now. I'm mean, not a lot. I mean, I, I work for an agency. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, larger Drupal projects, much larger than I was doing locally, for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's probably a good place to start. I can pass it over to um, Aaron. Are you are you able to? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I apologize for what's probably rough audio on your end. I'm a, a little more remote today than I would normally be, uh, but I'm uh, my, I'm Aaron Crosman. I've been working uh, in, with Drupal and in the Drupal space for uh, most of my career, uh, and uh, as a client and as a consultant. And I currently work actually as a Salesforce consultant uh, in addition to Drupal. Uh, 
but I've worked independent and with agencies and in a variety of different roles over time. Awesome. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, just uh, on another note, there's no electricity where an air in his head, so that's probably why you can't see him on the screen right now. So uh, he'll be he'll be out shortly when there's some electricity available in the air. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, dive into the questions we have for tonight and uh, kind of uh, working off of Will's comment. Uh, first thing we want to know is uh, what inspired you to be an independent consultant? And uh, again, this is one of the questions that I get asked a lot. Like, well, why did you interest yourself in you know, web design and all these kinds of things? And eventually uh, having your own business in the near future. And most of the time I just answer, well, it's because I pretty much failed at everything else. <laughs> and this was kind of like the last thing I had on the play that I could actually find out how to do. So we're interested in knowing, well, what, what inspired you to be an independent consultant? And the floor is out question out to everybody. I oh, saw you unmute, Will. I can jump in first if you want, or you can go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, for me, uh, I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I, I know my, my very first business was in third grade, and I convinced all of my classmates that uh, particular paper airplanes that I had looked up online to fold were the new hotness and sold them for 50 cents to a dollar each uh, for about a week in school before my teacher stepped in to put a stop to that. Um, but I've always had that spirit as far as um, what led me to take that path um, when it came to kind of an adult career, uh, honestly, was necessity. Uh, I mean, it, maybe it kind of builds um, on what you were saying, Mauricio, but I got out of school at the height of the 2008 financial crisis. And uh, a lot of places started cutting back at that point. And I suffered through three rounds of layoffs as companies found themselves rap rapidly retracting. And uh, when it came time to cut some of the proverbial fat, uh, cutting the inexperienced new um, newest team member fell under the knife a lot. Um, so for me, it was taking that and kind of driven out of a necessity uh, and I think it, it worked out both for me and uh, my clients starting out because um, they, you know, a lot of them had to cut back and let some of their full-time staff go, but that doesn't really diminish um, your IT needs, um, nor, um, you know, building up your web presence and continuing to try to grow and survive your business. So um, that's kind of how it started. And I... I think I continued on that path because I, for me, it came down to, I liked the sense of ownership and control it gave over my time and the direction I was heading. I, you know, worked with a lot of technologies early on outside of Drupal. Um, you know, we did some Java applications, um, some PHP, uh, a couple uh, small things with Zen Framework. Um, we evaluated Drupal and um, WordPress and we had uh, a couple Drupal projects. Um, but, you know, me being an independent consultant, I was able to make some decisions that I thought were prudent for me um, and eventually people that were working with me for a long term. Um, and, you know, we really focused in on Drupal, maybe spent longer, spent more time investing in researching and learning about the tool um, to build that mindset, that, that tool set up. Because I, in my mind, I saw uh, Drupal kind of continuing to grow and it was a great fit in the space. Um, so it, I mean, ultimately I like to think that it worked out, but it gave me a lot of control and flexibility over the direction that I personally was heading that I think I was expecting to have at some of the other, uh, larger companies I'd worked with in the past. Awesome. And I happened to be at that class, uh, with, uh, Chris and, uh, he sold those airplanes on a, a revolutionary zero mission engine that, uh, was not too far from the facts that were zero mission airplanes. So he was, he was truthfully there. And uh, Will, did you also have something to chime in with that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, so for me, I would say it was less of the entrepreneurial sort of approach. I mean, that, that there was definitely an aspect of that to it. Um, I mean, early on from a, as a, as a kid, I mean, I, I was interested in building websites. So I would say I'm more interested in the technology um, or at least that was probably the primary sort of fascination with it. I mean, early on, it was like really basic HTML, but um, 
you know, before I even got into building websites for other people, I mean, I was still kind of dabbling with CMSs at the time, E107 PHP Nuke with, for like building um, bulletin boards and, um, you know, some other, there's a ton of old ones out there, but um, and I use quite a lot of them. Yeah, PHP Nuke and E107 were like two of my favorites. Um, and that's like, I don't know, maybe early 2000s. Um, I mean, that was, you know, I think while I was still in high school when I was doing that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, I think I started building, um, you know, I had somebody approach me. Um, I mean, I did a lot of computer work, a lot of support for, um, I guess that's, that's kind of the point I want to make. So customer service was the, the big thing. Um, I, I did work in retail for a lot or for a while. Um, and I uh, did a lot of uh, kind of outside work um, at that. So I, I worked at uh, a retailer. Uh, that sold a lot of tech or the only place in town that sold technology um, but they didn't have any type of like um, you know allowing um, they didn't offer any service like you know setup service or um, you know anything like that so I started doing that kind of out of the side from there um, so you know some they would come a customer would come and buy a printer and they would need help installing it so um, you know the company I worked for didn't ha offer any of those services so they were okay with us you know, as long as they understood that it wasn't, you know, part of the, the organization, it was kind of on the side sort of a thing. Um, it was okay. And I think one of them like 19 or 20 when I first started doing that. And um, I guess that kind of broke the ice of, you know, sort of being your own kind of entity, uh, being your own sort of organization doing any kind of consulting work. I mean, granted, it was just going in most cases, installing a printer or installing some software. Um, but it just kind of got me in the, um, you know, I'm providing a service for a customer and kind of got me in that mentality. Um, so it was, you know, initially kind of a way to get ex some extra money on the side, but, um, but then started kind of going down that path of, uh, of provide being a service provider. Um, so yeah, I ended up working, um, outside as a very odd, so definitely not uh, web development related, but I started working, um, food and beverage. And so I like waited tables and, and bartended for a while, um, for a, you know, locally owned place too. So I started networking and, and meeting a lot of, you know, small business owners around town and, um, doing that. I've done like tech services and stuff before. Um, yeah, I was often, you know, hired to, to do work for, for them at the store, for their home, you know, random, random places. Um, and that picked up quite a bit. And then eventually people just started asking for websites, you know, if I knew how to do that. And of course I did. So, um, you know, started looking into it and um, there was not really, you know, I was trying to use E107 and some of the tools that I was used to, uh, which were great for, you know, kind of building a really, really basic site. But, you know, people were asking like for e-commerce solutions. Because again, I was working with like small, medium business and um, came to the point where I was trying to build my own CMS. I guess I just, you know, the tools that I was used to just were not the, you know, just were not available and it just did not provide what I needed. Um, and then eventually, you know, after, working on my own CMS for a while, found Drupal and I was like, this is perfect. And just started, you know, using that. And just every time I would find a new module, you know, I would just be blown away by like, you know, how, how much complexity was kind of boiled down to just enabling a module. Um, and they'll have all this functionality and it was just perfect. So, um, and then from there, you know, I just started doing more and more sites. And um, then that kind of, you know, eventually worked into the um, opening us a store, actual local store doing uh, computer, and web services for people. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the inspiration. So maybe by accident um, or just by happenstance of, of kind of where I was at and just uh, the tools that were available of the day. Um, but definitely wasn't, a, I guess, a drive to, um, I mean, there's definitely the entrepreneurial aspect of it for sure. Um, but I think it's just kind of the, the tools of the day. And I just thought it was the best, uh, or at least how I got into Drupal. Um, kind of on the, now I'm at where I'm at now. Uh, again, I, I now work for an agency, so I'm no longer a, an independent consultant. Um, and I have some, I guess, some thoughts about that too, but we gotta get to that later once we get to that point. So. Awesome. I mean, Great. you're downplaying the entrepreneurial. Like, I don't know if there's anything more entrepreneurial than like taking the opportunities that present themselves in front of you. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, was, it, it worked at a, yeah, it was Staples. So I worked at Staples and they didn't have any like tech services at the time. So they were just like, well, as long as I know it's not Staples, that's fine. I was like, really? Okay. So then I just went over on my lunch break to the copy print center, printed some business cards off their little kiosk. And I think literally that afternoon, I had my first client. It was pretty wild. <laughs> I think, yeah. I mean, I, I think that that outside of the box thinking, one, makes great developers, but two, kind of lends itself well to the independent consultancy space. Absolutely. 
Awesome. Thank you. Those are great answers. And kind of uh, working off of the answers you just gave, I know that Chris mentioned flexibility and customer service too is a big part of that. I mean, you're networking, you're getting to know people, you're getting to help them out. And you know, obviously that's a very good feeling to have. So with that said, what are some of the pros and cons of being an independent consultant? Uh, what uh, what uh, can you say for that two-part question? Pros and cons, what do y'all think? Um, I think you definitely have a lot more control in the direction that you head, um, you know, be it, where do you want to grow? Where do you, where do you, based on your experiences, your, your knowledge, um, your values, what's important to you and maybe your predictions is where you see the market growing over time. You can really harness and take full control. Um, and kind of control the direction that you're heading based on what um, personally fulfills you most. The, the downside to that is um, as you know, the independent portion of that is you are independently assuming all of the risk. Uh, you know, you do get to reap the benefit of that and it's, it's fantastic when it works out, but you also get to inherit all of the risk um, for poor, poorly made decisions um, and, you know, learn and uh, kind of deal with the consequences that comes along with that sometimes, it, it's stressful. And I know one of the things I hear a lot from maybe someone that has no experience either as an independent consultant or running their own business is the first thing that they gravitate towards is, oh, so you get to control your own working hours and you get to work what you want, when you want. I, while that was true, I think if you wanted to strive for success and growth that often was a lot more work than I ever would have expected. And I don't know that, that ever went away, but again, it was, it was a con, it was some stress, it was some risk, but uh, the direction we were able to ultimately go um, and the direction we were able to grow in, I thought was really fulfilling and really rewarding. Awesome, thank you, Chris. Anyone else would like to chime in? Yeah, um, I mean, I think the, the, the biggest pro is that um, it, it, as far as the, I guess, how you would define success, but, you know, if, if you were, you know, to define it by like how much money you could potentially make from, you know, being an independent consultant, I mean, you can make a lot more doing that. Um, is it worth it? I mean, that's a whole, you know, much lo larger discussion, but um you know, I mean, like you could, you could definitely have a lot more, um, you know, make a lot more being an independent consultant than you would, you know, if you were working, like, say, for an agency or working for an organization where, you know, you were essentially at salary or hourly or something like that. Um, but the, I would say another, or uh, probably a lot more to speak on the con sides, the uh, structure. So, you know, all the structure you would have, you would have as an independent uh, consultant would be for, for you. So, I mean, like if you have, um, you know, as far as making, um, I mean, just how you would interact with clients. I mean, if, whether that be through a ticketing system, you know, I mean, all of, all of these things, all of these decisions you would have to make and you would want to have that in there. So, I mean, some, some form of structure, you know, even it comes down to uh, contracts and that sort of thing, uh, documents, things that you would need, um, you know, to run a business. I mean, things that you would need in place um, for every single client, uh, everything that you would do, um, you know, scope of work, you know, it depends on the kind of the jobs you're getting to. I mean, if you're, if you're um, doing this as an independent consultant, um, you know, are you targeting, a, a, you know, a lower level, you know, a lower I guess a lower price point website, you know, something that, you know, of, of a, you know, thousand, two thousand or five hundred dollar pro, you know, you know, there, there's lots of different options that you would have there as, in a cons con as the consultant, you would need to determine, you know, what you're going to go after. Um, there's just a lot more work there. Um, you know, if you would, you know, and in, in you would want to build that structure to kind of support that too. Uh, so if you're working with an agency or working with an organization, um, you know, a lot of that, or, you know, a lot of that, structure a lot of that kind of boilerplate stuff that you would uh, typically have would be available to you um 
or you wouldn't have to worry about it is, is generally the, the, the process I mean, if you're just developing but uh, there's just a lot more to have to you know think about if you're going to down the road of, of being an independent consultant um i mean there's just a lot more investment um so i mean you're I know when I was doing it, at least, I mean, there, there were, there were no hours of the day. I mean, there really was no, I mean, if you're awake, um, hi Aaron. Um, but yeah, if you, I mean, if you're awake during the day, you're, you're working or you're thinking about work and, and that's in, in order for it to kind of be successful. I mean, that's just what you're going to have to do. Um, so if you're working uh, for an organization or an agency or something like that, I mean, you can actually have more of that work-life balance. Um, uh, but I mean, there's, there's some, necessarily say sacrifices i mean there's there's pros and cons definitely for each each one it's a really long list um to kind of go through and um you know kind of identify each one of those but um uh, yeah i mean it definitely can be rewarding i mean I, to be um independent to kind of be on your own and once you kind of have a lot of that stuff in place um you know a lot of that structure you know once you have that there um then you can kind of work on that and it would you know it's kind of an initial investment but that's what it is it's a, it's a big investment um to kind of make him and if you're doing kind of one-off sites i mean that's one thing uh, but if you're actually trying to do that as uh say a, a career or build it as an organization an entity um i mean structure is something that i think you would and that's the kind of a very broad word for you know a lot of stuff that you would need to do um and I don't know, Aaron, would you like to add to that? And you just, you just hopped in. Sure. I apologize for the delay of getting my video going, but here I am finally. Um, I'll actually kind of answer pros and cons along with kind of how I got into consulting. I'll see if I can lump them together. The For me, I got into independent consulting. Um, well, the first stint early on was the same reason as Chris. I, I graduated from college in the middle of the previous recession uh, in, in 2001. And so I needed uh, some side work uh, to just pay bills or, you know, and, and did some general consulting. But I went back to it really as a web consultant um, when I had a job where I felt like I was uh, tightly niched and not able to use the full breadth of my capacity and looking to make sure that I kept some of the other skills, the, the wider variety of skills sharp. Uh, and opportunities to grow in places that I didn't work day to day. Uh, and for me, that that was one of the upsides. Uh, and one of the major bonuses was that ability to work on projects that didn't align with my employer's main strategy. And so I was using a, a, an expanded skill set uh, over the course of my day uh, to do that. Um, I think the big drawback is the one that Chris highlighted as well as the, the risk all falling to yourself. There's, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, when things go sideways, uh, you're the one stuck uh, in front of it. And when you're at your resource, you know, when you're hit the limits of what you know, uh, you better go learn some new stuff um, because there's nobody else in the office to say, hey, have you ever tried to deal with this? Or can you brainstorm with me solutions to this weird problem I'm having? Uh, you're much more uh, hoping to find somebody uh, in the larger community who's awake at whatever hour you're working who might happen to have some clue uh, what you might have to solve your, your struggle. All right, awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, guys. So going off of your answers uh, as far as the cons are concerned you know we mentioned stress we mentioned risk mentioned sacrifices so those uh individuals who are perhaps interested in becoming independent consultants in the near future hear these words and kind of like uh oh here we go um i don't know about that you know no working hours no set working hours uh, i don't know if i can do that so for those individuals what would you suggest what what are some steps that uh, those who are starting or thinking about starting a consulting career, what are some of the first steps that you think these people would uh, probably need to take before they even start uh, their consulting career? Um, I think define what success is to them personally. I was largely driven um, similar to Aaron um, and I even mentioned the cons and remembering how stressful it was and how many hours I wouldn't trade uh, my time as a, a small business owner for anything in the world. I think one of the more valuable things that we had defined as what was success for us was the ability to learn at a rapid pace. Something that I have lost uh, working full-time for an agency is 
we, I mean, the agency is much more stable, but we take on less risk um, in some of our technological decisions. Uh, so we, I mean, to be frank, we, we tried a lot of interesting ideas that seemed reasonable at first um, to get our feet wet and learn new technologies at a rapid pace. And it was, it was fun, it was exciting, it was exhausting. Uh, at times, I know, staying up uh, a little bit later than probably should to uh, read through the like OpenGL and WebGL uh, white papers and spec sheets. Uh, I mean, it was it, it was liberating. But at the end of the day, like, we, you know, I and and the people that work with me were all on the same page. That was largely what was successful for us. Um, we weren't. We we I would say we we sustained financially, if nothing else. Um, but we, you know, our priority was not um, to generate as much revenue as possible. We also, we uh, really and thoroughly enjoyed working with our really small cap clients and working with local businesses. Uh, and again, it was, you know, that was success for us was finding people that were struggling, that didn't have the budgets to solve a lot of the problems that we saw they needed to have solved. And you know, coming in and coming up with solutions that worked for them, worked for their budget, were within bounds that really helped them pivot and uh, continue to run a successful business. And it always felt good. Uh, you know, I will mention uh, interacting with a lot of local businesses. It always felt good to do something that had a positive impact on a local business uh, and continuing to drive home that sense of community. I think just uh, to anyone that's considering it or that maybe feels that it's it's daunting i would say you know, one good you definitely should consider it uh, beforehand but you know have that pro and cons list for yourself and make sure that whatever success is for you whatever your values are make sure that it's worth the investment because it, it is there's a lot that goes with it yeah i think a lot of it is that being clear about about why you're doing it um and being honest with yourself about doing it like there's nothing wrong with doing independent consulting because you have no choice um, and you'd rather be doing something else, but you're going to do it because it pays the bill. There's nothing wrong with doing it because you're doing it on the side because it entertains you and you've got the hours. You know, I, I had a friend who uh, used to do uh, 30 or 40 hours of independent consulting on top of a full time job because he just likes to, like he's a workaholic. He just loves to work. Uh, and until he had a family, that was an awesome thing for him. And then he stopped doing that in part so that he could spend more time with his family. Um, and it's, you know, be, it's important to be clear with yourself about why you're doing it so that you don't uh, either do it too long, uh, do things you don't like doing, um, you know, or make yourself miserable, but be clear about your goals. Cause it'll make it, easy. you're going to, you're going to refine and change how you do things and what projects you take and what projects you ignore um, as you do it. And the more you have some sense of why you're doing it that you can come back to from time to time, uh, the more it'll be easier to kind of make those decisions and check yourself of, you know, I got into this because I wanted to help nonprofits. I haven't taken on a nonprofit client in two years. You know, I'm, I wanted to help small businesses, but I'm ending up with only nonprofits and no small local businesses. And, and they're, you know, they're crazy in their own way uh, versus the craziness of small locals. Like it, you know, it's, it's be clear about that so you can check yourself uh, and, and am I do, achieving the goal and chasing the dream I wanted to go after. Awesome. Excellent. Great answers, guys. So on top of that, when we think about, you know, like uh, Aaron said, you want to do it for the right reasons and, um, you know, let it come from you naturally organically. Uh, some of the things that I've seen just by, you know, my brief experience just with dealing with mostly family members and other individuals who are interested in building a website for their business or whatnot. A lot of the, I find a lot of the things I have to deal with have nothing to do with technology at all. It really has to do with just interactions with individuals, interactions with businesses. So I see that that's a huge gap. And I think that's a huge important part of this where, you know, uh, even the kids at school, sometimes I talk to them about soft skills. And, you know, the yes, the please, the just the professionalism that's involved kind of almost to a point almost trumps uh, the technology aspect of things, especially nowadays where, you know, everybody's working from home. So uh, what are 
what are some of the soft skills that you would recommend that anyone learn and anyone practice when dealing as an independent consultant? I mean, first and foremost for me are those basic listening skills. Um, yeah. You know, all, all the, the, the advice you can find about kind of active listening, um, being engaged with your client about what their goal is, um, you know, under, trying to guide them in the right direction uh, requires knowing what the direction they want to go is uh, and being open to uh, really hearing their their goals so that you can keep doing it. Um, understanding when they are yelling in your direction of whether they're yelling at you or whether their project, you know, things are just stressful uh, and being able to separate those two things out so you're not feeling beaten down. All those kinds of uh, abilities really get driven off of that uh, active listening and paying good attention to your client and what they're actually saying, not just the words they're using, but but what their intention and their their meaning behind them are. Yeah, I would so. definitely say, I, would, I mean, same thing. I mean, just just listening is the big part of it. Um, understanding the, the the human, you know, understanding how they are and how they, if you can understand that one, say necessarily how they tick, but I mean, if you could, um, you know, understand that, you know, you could have the same task or the same thing that you're trying to build for, you know, two different people. Um, how, what they're going to focus on and what they're going to, um, you know, find that's most important uh, and what they're going to see as a priority is, is going to be different. Um, and how they may communicate, communicate that would be um, very, could be very different too. Um, so, I mean, try to take the time to understand, um, you know, each person individually, um, you know, being, an, being the independent consultant anyway, I think that would be um, tremendously helpful. Um, another thing too is, you um, I think just kind of understanding that, you know, the expectations for each client or each person that you're going to be working with um, will be different. I mean, I've worked with some clients that, you know, want to see everything essentially built for them and there's going to be more work involved with that. Um, if you can, um, you know, potentially identify that early on, you know, when you're you know thinking about pricing or um, trying to, you know, understand that, you know, if they're, if you're trying to figure out, um, you know, how long this is going to take, you know, being able to identify if somebody is going to, um, I usually call it hand holding, but I mean, if somebody is going to need a lot more, um, you know, support in order to, um, you know, kind of understand things that you may take for granted, you know, I mean, that that's going to take a lot of time. Um, and just kind of knowing how to, to address that and, um, you know, work with them to, to understand it. Um, I think that's, you know, a big part of it anyway. I agree awesome. with that. I, I, you know, definitely communication. Um, I found, you know, human empathy really was uh, one of the most important things and working. And I think um, I mean, Will did a great job of, of kind of covering empathy. The only thing I'll, I'll add is really the uh, beyond communication, empathy, the ability to set boundaries and expectations for yourself and everyone around you. Um, you know, that's part of the communicate of communicating of, you know, setting clear boundaries and expectations with your clients, with your coworkers, if you're working with a team, um, and with yourself um, to set rules um, for yourself to make sure that you, um, you aren't going to overstretch, you maintain a healthy mindset, and you're you know, setting yourself up for something that's uh, sustainable in the long run. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you guys. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, clear communication, empathy. Those are extremely important things that we want to qualities that we all want to have uh, when starting consulting work. And beyond that, you know, I know it's uh, for someone like me being a first generation born in this country, our, my parents have always, since childhood, have stressed higher education and higher education this and make sure you get a degree here or get a master's there. So when we speak of small business, it, it, it kind of falls into that realm as well nowadays where it just seems like, OK, are you certified or do you have some kind of credentials? Uh, yeah, well, you, you do great with what you do, but, you know, what courses have you taken or what kind of education have you taken beyond just a normal high school education. So, uh, 
you know, this is a question I get asked a, a lot. You know, wh what what do you think of taking maybe a higher education course in small business or anything to that effect? What do y'all think of that? Would you recommend that? I, it's an interesting question. I definitely think there's value there. Um, I think. I don't know that I would say to limit it strictly to that or not to that. Um, I think there's definitely a lot of value in kind of you as the individual consultant evaluating the value proposition, if you will, of each circumstance. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head, the, the continued education, the constantly pushing yourself to continue to learn and grow, whether formal or informal, is key to any form of success. Uh, but I think approaching each situation independently and recognizing, you know, because it, we, our time is finite, um, and especially that's painfully, uh, you're painfully aware of that if you're an independent consultant of just, uh, you know, evaluating what it is and making sure that the value of your time invested is worth the, the return. You know, if it is higher ed, looking at what the course structure is, it makes sure that it overlaps with. Um, what you're looking for or what areas you feel um, you have some room to grow or maybe a weakness um, and make sure kind of maybe look at the results um, for people that get through the course. I mean, I think the, particularly when you're looking at coursework um, beyond just necessarily looking at higher ed, which I do think can offer some useful things. And I'm married to a college professor. Um, the there's also though for running your small business looking towards the, you know, does the local business association have uh, some of the basic trainings on particularly the tools, the local laws, making sure you're, you know, leveraging whatever local resources may be available. Um, and often those courses are free or super cheap, uh, at least as these things go, they're certainly not like taking coursework at a, uh, at a college, um, you know, and being able to leverage that for resources. I don't tend to come into the camp of going out to get certifications, uh, particularly on the smaller end. Um, I think the competitive advantage you have is small, is more in that, that soft skill relationship building, uh, being able to be very personal and very connected to your client uh, and addressing their need their, the way they need it addressed. Uh, I think the certifications honestly make a bigger difference on the medium to large size, uh, where the you're trying to prove that your large team is all competent, not just uh, that we've got one, you know, Chris is awesome and the rest of us ride his coattails and try not to look like fools. Like we, you know, you want, it makes more of a difference there. Uh, on the independent, it's gonna be more those those personal relationships. And so those certifications are not gonna be as meaningful um, to the potential audience. And there are, I'm sure, exceptions to that because there's an exception to every rule. Um, but I would look more at the support for how I operate the business, support for how I keep myself out of legal trouble uh, and not uh, for necessarily that, the technical side of it uh, that I'd, I'd go more the informal routes for. Yeah. Anecdotally, that was my experience. Um, when I started out and even when I continued, we um, we hooked up with the Chamber of Commerce, both in North Augusta and Augusta. Um, and we took some classes. We found, specifically, we found um, a consultant for free uh, as far as helping us in establishing some of the business things and more of the business operations that you know, we were all lacking on being technically minded folks, uh, which is immensely beneficial. Um, I think, to be really specific, any sense of community was fantastic. Uh, we found a lot of support and a lot of help in the open source, specifically in the Drupal community from other people that were doing something similar. Uh, you know, Will, Will and I bonded when we both had a shop, one in North Augusta, one in Aiken. Um, and I think a lot of our earlier conversations were around things we had tried, successes, failures, and you know, that was a great learning experience as well. Yeah, um, I think starting a you know starting a business as far as um, you know courses or anything you, you would need to do, uh, none of those required. I mean, as far as you know, do you absolutely have to do it? No, you don't. Would it be helpful? I think it certainly will. Um, but uh, if you can make friends with a lawyer and a, and a tax person, I think that would probably be the 
more of the tax person is probably the, the more important one uh, or t- finding a tax guy, you know, or, or, or a gal, I mean, a person, just a tax person. Um, and that, that's a big thing. There's also score. So if you're in South Carolina and you're thinking about starting a new business, uh, that is a, is a great resource. They have chapters pretty much in every, um, most, most towns. Um, I know there's one here in Aiken um, and they offer, um, they have some limited resources as far as like, you know, consulting meetings and stuff, but they, they do a lot. Um, They're doing definitely. a lot virtually now. They're a client. I've been building them virtual systems. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, so yeah, they're great. Um, and I know when I first started my business, I, I had a, I think it was like a one hour consultation for free with them, which was uh, a lot of fun. It was, it was, it was interesting too, because I had done a lot of work prior to that, like thinking, you know, this is how this is going to work. And I had a bunch of flow charts and stuff. I remember they looked at me kind of funny when I walked through there and showed them all that. But um, it was a good experience. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as learning what you need to learn, I mean, you can learn anything you need with Google and, and YouTube for sure, especially around these these days now. Um, but taxes, take that seriously. Um, you know, that, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, and uh, insurance and everything else. I mean, kind of is the legal side of things. I mean, that's a big thing that you'll have to consider um, if you're trying to do it as a business and kind of as an independent consultant um, and what hurt to go. And, and taxes are definitely, even on the side, taxes are a thing to keep in mind because they, yes. your taxes will get way more complex very quickly. Even if you're like, I'm just running it. Because the first time I did, I was like, yeah, I'm not making that much on the side. It's kind of extra a little work. And, and then I went to do my taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I could say any one thing to think about that taxes do that, like that's probably the most important thing more so than the technology and actually building the sites. No fun. You'll figure, right. You'll figure that out, but the taxes part, that'll, that'll hurt if you don't handle that. So. Good. Awesome. Well, it's a good thing that Aaron is related to uncle Sam. So therefore there's no issues there whatsoever. So you, you, you've built this infrastructure, you have the soft skills, you have the knowledge, you have the techie stuff going, you have pretty much the experience. But as we know, to, in order to grow a business, you have to promote your business, you have to market yourself as well. In the age of social media, there are various platforms that are out there for just marketing, social connections and whatnot. So what are some of your suggestions as far as an independent consultant? How, how exactly do you market yourself nowadays? How, how do you go, what platforms do you use or what techniques do you use to do that? Um, I mean, I think for me, it's always been kind of word of mouth. Uh, a lot of times it, it's, you know, on the small to independent size, it's, it's all about relationships. It was, we, we tried a lot of things. Um, I tried a lot of things. Um, we, we tried uh, various advertising platforms. We tried some print media locally. Um, we tried a lot of social media. I, we had mixed successes. I think um, both in volume and in quality of responses uh, that we got, we, we were served much better with maintaining and curating relationships with existing clients we had and um, getting recommendations from you know, doing the best work we possibly could with our existing clients that would lead us to new clients, new quality clients, which I think uh, took a while for me to really um, understand the importance getting started. Because there, there are various qualities of clients, regardless of um, what their budget is and what they're willing to pay you. And I think that that's going to vary um, with every individual based, again, what your goals are and what your what success means to you. I mean, the other piece I would, in the relationship bucket that I found very useful um, is the relationships with other independents um, that when they get, you know, particularly if you have uh, slightly uh, offsetting skill sets. So if they're more on the front end, you're more on the back or vice versa. Um, you know, they've got more on the communication strategy. You've got more on the tech strategy, whatever the right balance is. Um, they can often be interested in pulling you into their projects uh, and uh, you can you know, pull them into yours that uh, some of the larger independent projects I did for, through a particular uh, friend of mine who you know, I, he and I had met socially at one point and then I needed, was on a project and we needed a front end guy and he got in over his head a couple years later on a 
with an international client and said, Hey, I need some real backend and Salesforce help. Can you, can you come help me out with this project? And, um, those were both really interesting and exciting projects and, um, but I wouldn't have found them, uh, without, without his involvement or well, the first one I had found and we would have failed <laughs> without his involvement. Uh, and the second one I would never have known. And it was a neat uh, opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to really add to that. I mean, there's, um, you know, when I, when I was getting into it and, and starting my shop, I mean, we actually had some success with the newspaper, but I would really don't think I would have much success with that now. Um, yellow pages too. That was kind of the quite the hot question of the day, like <laughs> to, to do the yellow pages or not to do the yellow pages. We went to not, we opted not to. Um, but I remember when I did that, I remember my, my uh, some, some family members were like, no, you should really do that. You should really consider that. I was like, I don't know. So I, I was like, the other thing I'm seeing out of people now who I know are independent uh, and looking or kind of moving from that independent, truly independent to small business um, is uh, marketing, particularly in like in the LinkedIn and other kind of professional networking spaces, yeah. uh, kind of at a scale one up from where you are, not necessarily at the price point one up from where you are, but acting. Uh, so right, you're an independent consultant, but your name is not Aaron Crossman Consulting. Um, right. having a, a, a real brand name and then, uh, you know, everything is in plurals. We do this, we do that. Yeah. Uh, implying One, a slightly larger company, not getting too far ahead of yourself. Not we can handle your fortune 100 <laughs> clients. Just fine. When uh, we, yeah, when we kind of just to that Aaron, exactly. Whenever we had our computer shop, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with, uh, Asterix, but I had an, an IVR. So whenever you call in uh, our phone number, uh, it was like an, an answering machine, but it was a smart answer machine, you know, press one for this, press two for that press, you know, so all these things. Uh, there's only two of us in the shop and we were in the same room. Uh, but if it was like computer services, it would ring one phone, web services would ring another. And for each um, uh, recording, I recorded everything myself, but then I like pitch shifted it and like made me sound like a different person. So whenever would someone would call, you'd be like, you'd hear one voice and then uh, you might catch a different voice that you're kind of questioning on the second line and be like, this, this sounds like a different person. Maybe, maybe it's the same. And then you would come in and see in, in here two entirely different voices. Although it was just really me you just pitch shifted a bunch of different times to imply that we had a few more people, um, not quite to the size that like Aaron was saying, like enterprise level, but you know, we're, we're, we're a bigger operation than we were. You might just call it the afternoon shift when you came in and drop off your computer or sit down and talk about a website. So yeah, those little things can, um, and definitely the we, you know, speaking in plurals as opposed to I, um, that's a thing that even to, and I, I think that kind of goes into communication too, uh, because a lot of that, that strategy could be um, in, in written communication, um, you know, dealing with uh, email and, and large volumes of email working with remote. Um, you know, I think that can also uh, be beneficial too. Yeah. Awesome, great, great answers. You guys are doing a great job. You seem like you have experience in these areas. So obviously, uh, yeah, word of mouth relationships and, you know, we, we talked about quality as well. So obviously, you know, when you have that experience, you have that kind of quality that separates you from pretty much everybody else. Uh, one of the questions I, I mainly get is, OK, well, how, how do you gauge that quality when it comes down to a project and charging someone else for your services? How exactly keeping the quality that you provide in mind, how exactly can you, do you gauge how you're going to charge somebody for X project? That, oh, at least for me personally, that was always um, one of the toughest things. Um, I think, I, I think always being honest with yourself to repeat something Aaron uh, mentioned earlier as to what the fair price would be for the work, for what you feel is honest and right and fair, um, regardless of what the particular circumstances may be. Um, and, you know, create boundaries and expectations with yourself. Um, you know, always be honest with yourself with what you feel a fair price would be and, you know, have absolute limits for what exceptions you're willing to make for that. Um, I know, for example, we, we've, did some work for some nonprofits 
and we had a 10% margin where we would under we, we would take our fair prices and, and underbid to work with um, some local groups that didn't have uh, the same budget that we were working with some of our other clients. Um, and I think for us, it was more of an issue of not knowing what to charge, but always being willing to understand that no, and, and that some clients, some projects aren't meant to be and, and knowing when is a good time to walk away. And I think, um, I know I'm curious, Aaron or Will, if, if you all had similar experiences. I, I mean, I find the independent work in part because it's not my day-to-day -day job. Um, I'm often able to just do uh, time and materials. So the risk is relative to me is relatively minimal in that respect. Um, it's not zero, but you're not likely to get stuck on the fixed bid that you're sitting there six months later going, and now I've made five dollars a day or um, you know five cents an hour. Uh, you know, you know you don't end up in those places. Um, that's not always an option. Some people just either want or demand uh, fixed pricing. Um, but because it was always side work, it was able to, you know, then I could be picky. Uh, uh, I, I think there's also, it's tempting when you're new to reduce your prices, um, you know, to figure out what the industry standard is to say, well, I'm new and so I'm not as good as those folks. And one of the piece of advice that I was given early on that I've really, I stuck to and, and I think worked really well was actually being very clear about like, this is my, you know, uh, having price sheets and invoicing that was, my price is the industry standard, whatever I can kind of think is the going rate for a competitive price. For you as my, you know, I'm really excited by your project and so I'm giving you X percent discount. In part because it makes it easier to come back to those folks a year later and say, you've been getting the discounted rate and that's now expired. But it's always been my discount rate. You've always seen that. This isn't a bait and switch. It's I've always been up front with you that my real rate was, you know, ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent higher, whatever the right adjustment was for you early on. Now we need to move you to the and and structuring your contracts uh, too, so that you've got you're not permanently locked into pricing. It's a, a common early on mistake in contracting to say my rate is X. And there's no room in the contract to say we'll never renegotiate, um, and to make sure your contract has language that says you know it can be you know it can be balanced with the client of you know you'll get six months notice or six weeks notice or some kind of notice about rate change. It's not going to be like congratulations we bumped it. Like you can you can be fair and kind and open with your client, but also leave yourself room to say like this isn't my rate for the rest of my life. You are not grandfathered in forever. Um, just, you know, this is just what I'm setting early on. Um, and that also leaves a room to have just been totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, when we were doing the, um, you know, when I had my shop and I was doing a lot more independent consulting, I think what I learned was that if someone came to you for a web, <clears throat> came to you for web services, are they coming to you for a website or are they coming for you for, for Drupal development? And when I had my, my shop and I was working locally, it was always a website. Uh, to me, that meant I was building it in Drupal because I liked Drupal. That was my tool. That's what I loved. Um, but uh, what I found was that, you know, maybe Drupal wasn't always the best tool for the job um, at the time. So learning what the budget actually is, I think is a very important thing that I know early on, it was always an awkward thing uh, to really think about and to, because I think from the client's perspective, or at least when I was thinking about it initially, um, it almost act, you know, it almost felt like I was asking the client, like, how much money do you, well, you know, how much money do you got? You know, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, and I, and I could see that, you know, I could, I could totally understand that, but, you know, understanding how to be like, well, no, look, I mean, like you could, you're asking for a lot of stuff. What are you actually, you know, what is your budget? What are you, what do you have to work with so that we can find the right tools for the job? Um, you know, do you have $600 and you have like a giant list of inventory that you want to sell online? Well, maybe Shopify will be the way to go. 
um you know or and at the time you know that's what it was kind of the, the, the tools of the job were you know shopify you know, doing an uber cart you know it's drupal five in six days but um so i mean like there's there's a a, a lot of of in-betweens but i think knowing that budget is uh, very important now if it's Drupal work, time and materials, and, you, and if you have a clear path of direction, absolutely. Um, you know, this you estimate this at being so many hours, uh, whatever your hourly rate is. Um, I mean, there is definitely an industry standard. Um, I mean, you can base that on your your skill level, um, and you kind of go go from there. Uh, it's there's not one correct number. I mean, it can be all sorts of things. But um, you know, when we were building websites locally, you know, that's people were just coming for a website they needed to perform certain functions they didn't really care how how it performed that they wanted to look good they had some sort of idea of how they wanted to look like um but being able to you know have those communication skills and understand you know being able to receive listen and and pull the information in and then finding you know what tools and um you know whether that's a cms whether that's a service um you know to, to provide those features um and then just being honest with them, being able to say like, this is what you have to work with. I mean, if this is your budget, that's fine. I mean, there's definitely tools for that budget, but you know, if you want to uh, create a spaceship, I mean, there's, there's a, a price, you know, cost to that. So, I mean, and there's going to be some uh, wiggle room too, because I mean, there's going to be things, you know, unknown things that you run into. So, I mean, understanding that this is going to be a range of, of, of things and understanding that it might be over is a good um, conversation maybe have even before you get started because it's a lot easier um, and, and also overestimate too is a, is a good thing as well um, because it's a lot easier to come in under budget than it is to come in over budget um, and then you look like the hero and they want to you know provide some additional support on after that too so I mean you know overestimating is a good thing um, or it's a, it's encouraged uh, not don't go crazy with it, but you know, you know to, within reason. So you but definitely try to like, bias. Yeah, right. So, um, particularly if you're if you're new, if you're used to having other people around, that shift to oh, and I need to think about how long it takes to spin up a server, and I need to take to think about how long it takes to spin up you know to set up this, and I need to factor in all those meetings with the client that I'm not used to thinking about. That you know all these extra pieces add up. Uh, and so making sure they're worked into the, into your budget and your thought about it. Um, and that, you know, the client wants more meetings than you expected. They ran, they're going to run over. Even if you're sharp and perfect on your technology, which you will not be, um, the client will not be sharp and perfect on their meeting attendance and that kind of stuff. I would also say, don't make assumptions too. like know where, know where the site's going to be hosted. Know that going into it, uh, have that conversation. Um, I mean, early on, um, I mean, you don't want any last minute surprises, especially you know, it depends on the size of the clients. I mean, sometimes you might, that might be kind of an understood thing that the client knows is going to be hosted somewhere. Uh, maybe it's on a current host, but I mean, at least have a conversation, know where that site's going to be hosted early on, you know, try to get as many things that you can, as many questions as you can definitively get answered, uh, things like where is it going to be hosted? Um, you know, who's going to be paying for it? I'd hopefully them, um, you know, don't, I, we did that early on too, is where we would register domains under an account that we had for another client. And that's a terrible mistake. Don't do that. Um, make them set up the account. Um, and, and so where they have access to it. So, I mean, there's like a lot of little things that you'd want to just kind of make sure that you have in place, uh, even before you begin the project or you at least have a conversation about it, you know, have it, have it known. So. I will definitely echo that aspect. Um, you know, don't make assumptions and clearly define what done means. Your time and materials is nice and that gives you uh, maybe a little bit more protection than otherwise. If it is a, a fixed um, price where you're delivering something for a, a price, make sure that um, you're both on the same page for what that is and, and what it means for your work to be complete. Our, to Will's point, are you delivering them a, a working website via code and database? Are you publishing and are you publishing uh, the end result on some hosting platform? Are you maintaining it? Um, you know. Is there a warranty period after? Uh, and even if you're going more of uh, maybe the consulting work, make sure there's clear expectations about what work you're doing and what work you're not doing. Um, I know uh, specifically in the past, I've been burnt a lot as coming in as a consultant for back end work and 
setting forth with doing that and delivering that and there being a lot of frustrations about how my back end work wasn't themed to look correctly. Um, so I ultimately just make sure that you know you're not making assumptions and you're you and the client are on the same page around what done means and you're you have the same expectations. Absolutely great. So what we could take out of this now is that uh, you know crossman.com now's the time to get your 20% discount for life at his website. So you definitely want to take advantage of that now. Uh, at, uh, .com is a hunting company? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very appropriate then. Uh, crossman.com. No judgment, for... Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. But, uh, so definitely because something. I wanna... discovered that they existed. <laughs> oh, Lord. So definitely want to take advantage now of the great lifetime 20% discount at crossman.com. So excellent uh, answers, guys. Appreciate that. So we earlier talked about, and uh, we'll we'll touch on this about taxes and all those kinds of things. And we just spoke about meetings and sometimes problems with technology, making a budget, all these kinds of things were uh, kind of like on the administrative side almost. And, uh, you know, just working myself with the commissioner for minority affairs. And we, that seems to be kind of the, the overall over the, the biggest problem that we see that, you know, these small businesses are great what they do. They're awesome for whatever they do, but they don't really plan. They're just happy about having a business. They don't really think about the administrative side of things when we talk about taxes and budgeting and having meetings and all these kinds of things. And it's usually just a one man job or one woman job and they're tasked to do every single thing. So when it comes down to some kind of administrative duties, uh, what, what what are some of those? I know that we just mentioned some, but any other ones that you can mention that are things that are important, but kind of sometimes we really don't focus on? I think tax, I mean, taxes is a great one. Um, I think along with that, some form of bookkeeping or record keeping. Um, you know, end of the year, you have to, you know, figure out obviously how much money you owe dear uncle sam but also how successful you've been um you know to aaron's point uh, i think he said it mentioned make sure that you're not working for five dollars a day uh you should at least have a, enough record keeping in place uh to make those calculations at how much time how much real time investment you sunk versus how much you're getting out of it um i think uh, those are the biggest ones um of course depending on what it is, um, you know, insurance and liability. I, I don't know that that is over, super applicable. Um, and I know, <laughs> uh, you know in 2008, it, it was a different concern, um, but, you know, depending on how long you want to do it, um, you know, health insurance becomes a factor of that too. I mean, that's, you know, to be frank, still one of the biggest decisions that keeps me attached to an agency now is don't have to deal with that. Um, I think, it's more complicated now than it was back then even, uh, you know, and along with taxes and insurance, it's always going to be, I'd recommend finding resources. It's a, they're all large, complicated tasks and subjects. I think finding resources that can help you in that, whether it's a friend or a relationship you've built or a local professional or an online service, like a software as a service type solution, um, will really help. It, it will probably be some costs associated with it, but will be well worth your time and knowing that there's not any errors. Um, the one other thing, I, I guess, thinking about record keeping and taxes is understanding the trajectory you're going to be on um, and finding some resources, doing some research about retirement, which is one of the other big benefits um, that you get working with a large agency or a large employer is, you know, kind of research that landscape and make sure that you're not um, completely glossing over or skipping that. And there are some really good retirement options for the independent consultant, but they're not the kind of thing you will find just, you know, it's not going to hit the homepage of Vanguard or Fidelity. It's going to, they're, they require some research and understanding. 
Um, the, the other piece that I, I would add to, to Chris's list, which is an excellent list, is, is getting your initial contracts uh, at least vaguely right. Um, there, are, there are good, cheap, and free resources for that. Um, but not trying to just draft your, like, I'm a smart guy, I can write my own contract. Uh -uh. Nope, nope, nope. There are people who have thought about things that you have not uh, and have uh, worried about how not to get sued over things that you will forget about uh, or will get sloppy in your language and it'll matter. Uh, and, I've, uh, and I'm always surprised when I work with people who uh, either don't come with a, a contract already uh, and, you know, and we'll trust a team to provide them a contract when we're working with independents. And it's a little unlike you trust us to write your contract. We, we not necessarily have your best, like we have our best interest as the company at heart and our clients. Um, you need to have your own uh, and be ready uh, to negotiate and understand what's in it and what should be in it. Yeah, I would just take it a text person. That was my... <laughs> the biggest one um yeah i mean definitely get a tax person um in in get that their bookkeeping for sure i mean there's a ton of services out there fresh books quick books quick books online um that's probably the QuickBooks is, I mean, is generally the standard but uh quick books online i think is a, a very good one um that a lot of accountants and things use uh yeah, I mean, just understanding that responsibility, um, you know, and understanding if you're not going to be want to be responsible or to handle that, then find somebody to do that for you. I mean, there's plenty of people that offer uh, bookkeeping and accounting services. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, look into that. I mean, take that seriously. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest, the biggest thing. And they can help you also talk about the other piece of it, which is when do you set up your LLC? When right. are, you, are you doing this enough that it's worth setting up? That's fairly early. It's earlier than many people think about it. Um, it's before you're full time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and setting up an LLC in South Carolina is, is actually very, very easy. Um, I know some people, a lot of people, the kind of standard is to like go through, um, was a legal zoom, but SC business one stop is great. Um, you can go there. You don't have to use legal zoom at all. I mean, legal zoom is essentially going to charge you the same thing that SC business one stops when that's your, your fees, your state fees. Uh, but then legal zoom charge you like pretty much double that and that's legal zooms fees for the same thing i think it's actually faster to go through it on sc business one stop um and i was pretty impressed with that uh, every time i've told somebody to go through it and how fast it turns around and how easy it is so um yeah you can do that um yeah and then is kind of aaron's point too with the contracts you know it's a huge thing have a lawyer or someone who's you know knows what they're doing taking taking a look at that um because that's that's huge and All often right. overlooked. So. Excellent, thank you guys. So that kind of uh, leads us to our final question. Uh, I know that we spoke about score earlier. You guys have mentioned uh, SC Business One Stop. Thank you for mentioning a state agency. That's always as <laughs> a good thing to mention. So beyond score, beyond. Uh, business one stop beyond maybe QuickBooks online. Can you think of any other resources specifically like, you know, maybe training modules or any kind of resources that are available on a local state or just general commercial level that you would recommend for independent consultants? For time tracking, I would say toggle. Um, it's free. It works great. Um, I, I use it daily and have used it for years, but um, it's great for being able to just kind of quickly switch between tasks and um, just kind of keep track of everything. Kind of like what Chris was saying earlier, keeping track of the physical time that you spend on things is very important. Um, and having a, a, a way to easily do that, that's great. And it's, for, it's a free service, uh, T-O-G-G-L. So, I love it. I definitely agree with with that, uh, I'm glad that we'll remember the name of, of SCORE. Um, they were fantastic to work with. Again, um, local uh, Chamber of Commerce, both in Augusta and North Augusta in our case, were just phenomenal. Um, and I've heard great things out of Aiken as well. Um, and I, I actually, I had a lot of luck um, specifically with what I was doing, um, going through Meetup and finding some tech related meetups or community groups um, to exactly what happened with or what Aaron was mentioning. I, I 
pretty early on for form some relationships with some folks where we had overlapping skill sets that led to more growth, more capabilities, more capacity. Um, actually, ultimately going through Meetup and you know communities in the Drupal space was what led to the transition from small business to um, agency was just you know some of those relationships that we had built, which is just invaluable, both for ideas about day-to-day -day operations, business admin, quality of life, um, as well as technical approaches within the Drupal space. Yeah, the, the, the consult, the small business association kind of thing, whether it's your chamber of commerce or whatever, you know, different cities and different counties have a variety of things looking into what those are uh, near you uh, for that support uh, and and asking kind of open-ended questions of those folks of like, is there anything else we should go look at? Uh, don't just ask them the, the pointed directed question, but give them opportunities to say, hey, you're new. You probably didn't think of um, Or, you know, that we have this weird thing here that's to your advantage or watch out for or whatever, or some of both most likely. Um, uh, and finding, you know, those niche uh, support pieces uh, can be really important. I know when we first moved to town, we, for a brief time, were part of the, uh, there was a, uh, you know, a young professionals group that the Chamber of Commerce ran in Aiken. And uh, while half the people worked at banks, the other half were really quite interesting. Um, <laughs> and, and were, you know, some of them were useful contacts to, to get to know and uh, to understand and, um, learn some things about the community and how things were working out uh, and where the niche, where the local pockets of, of stuff were um, from that, that kind of group. So finding, you know, there are different things of different natures for different groups um, are definitely worth uh, digging into. Well, not quite the course you were talking about earlier. Um, I know in talking to a lot of other small business owners, I don't know why I attached to this, but I'd often ask if there were any particular books that they would recommend, um, you know, in the space of small business or operations or even within the, the Drupal space. And I got some great finds out of that. Um, I ended up reading a lot of books that were, were very dry and mildly helpful. Um, if anybody recommends any books on how the tax code works for small businesses, I don't go down that route. Um, but I, I did, you know, I think I found that particularly useful. Um, and even thinking about the independent consulting space um, or even agency life, uh, I found some great books like The Myth Mythical Man Month um, and a couple others that were just great to conceptualize um, to be better at what I was doing. Awesome. Thank you guys for answering all those questions for us. So out of here, we can uh, take some lection. Uh, I'm saying literally speaking in Spanish, we could take some good advice uh, from these answers that we got today. So obviously, some of the soft skills we want to uh, apply are listening skills, right? Uh, we were created with two ears and one mouth for a reason. Uh, so we can listen a little bit better than we could speak. Communication, empathy, obviously, those go hand in hand. Um, get a tax person, either female, male, if you have a tax professional that's a cat that's even probably the best option for you definitely look into that and uh be mindful of all the great resources we have locally um word of mouth is something that you want to have you know, build your reputation out of uh just the quality of work that comes out so uh we thank you will chris and aaron for doing such a great job in answering these questions tonight and providing us with some great insight and uh, throw it back to whoever wants to catch it. I guess, Aaron, <laughs> thank you guys. I, I think the only other uh, follow-up is uh, I do think we're still hunting a topic for next month. So if you have topic ideas,